When calculating latitude by local apparent noon or meridian passage, we need a nautical sextant to take a reading of the sun, and we need to correct that reading for dip, index error, and main correction. Refer to an earlier video if necessary. We also need the nautical almanac. There's one conceptual piece that we need to talk about first, and that is the fact that the sun is out there somewhere in space, and if you were to stand on it and drop a line right down to the earth, it would impact in one particular spot. That spot is called the declination of the sun. It's measured north or south of the equator, and that spot moves over the course of the day as the earth rotates out from underneath it. Now you can also imagine that somewhere on the earth, our vessel has a position, and that position is defined as its latitude. Well, there's one time each day when the sun and us are on the same meridian or line of longitude. So as the earth rotates beneath the sun, once each day, the sun is on the same line of longitude as us, or it's on our meridian, and that's called meridian passage. It also happens when the sun is at its highest point in the day. If you can form a relationship between these positions, then we can really quickly use meridian passage to our advantage. So if that's our latitude, and this is the declination of the sun, if we can just measure something to relate these two things mathematically, we can calculate our latitude. And we can do that by measuring something called zenith distance, right? So if we can obtain zenith distance, we can look up the declination of the sun, we can use a mathematical relationship to find our latitude at meridian passage once per day. So what is zenith distance? Well, it's best to think about it like this. Right, here's you with your sextant. Uh, the spot directly over your head is called your zenith. And if this was the horizon, typically what we do with the sextant is we measure the angle from the horizon to the sun. And that's called our height observed. And we'll use that in all of our mathematical uh, relationships going forward in the advanced stuff. But uh, it turns out that if you can kind of take the inverse of that angle, if you take this angle right here, that's called zenith distance. And that's a really fundamental concept in kind of the theory of celestial navigation, not necessarily the practice of it. But if you take the height observed and subtract it from 90, because this is a right angle, you can get your zenith distance. So for instance, if your height observed was 40 degrees above the horizon, then the zenith distance is 50 degrees, right? So it's just 90 minus the height observed is your zenith distance. And so back here, you can use that zenith distance plus the declination, which you look up to obtain your latitude. And really you're gonna end up in kind of one of three cases. In the first case, latitude in red will be equal to zenith distance in green minus declination in blue. In the second case, latitude in red is equal to zenith distance in green plus declination in blue. In the final case, latitude in red is equal to declination in blue minus zenith distance. All of these examples are just hypothetical cases and it's really going to depend on your ship's dead reckoning position in terms of what relationship you can form between the declination of the sun, the zenith distance, and your latitude. We observe the sun at 75 degrees above the horizon, right? Well, according to our diagram, then that would make the zenith distance 15 degrees in this case, because the zenith distance is always just 90 minus the height observed. Well, that's good. If we were to look up in the nautical almanac, uh, the declination for the sun, and we'll show you how to do that in a minute, we might get 10 degrees north as an example. Well, what would the latitude be in that case? Well, it really depends on the situation that we have. So if we had a situation in which we were in the Northern hemisphere and the sun was also in the Northern hemisphere, but just below us, then that would mean this is declination, this is zenith distance, so that means latitude 
should just be zenith distance plus declination. So our latitude in this case would be 25 degrees north. How about another basic example? In this case, we observe the uh, sun above the horizon at 43 degrees above the horizon. So in this case, the zenith distance would be uh, 90 minus 43 or 47 degrees for the zenith distance. And again, using the nautical almanac, if we had a declination of say 10 degrees south, then um, again, if we're in the Northern hemisphere, what kind of situation are we in? In this case, we are in the northern hemisphere and the sun is in the southern hemisphere. So latitude is going to be equal to zenith distance minus declination. So latitude is equal to zenith distance minus declination in that case. And so if we did zenith distance minus declination, we should end up with a latitude of 37 degrees north. What about an example when, say, we're in the northern hemisphere but near the equator in the summer, so the sun is to the north of us? So here we are on 21 August 1981, and it is 1600 GMT, Greenwich Mean Time or Universal Coordinated Time. How do we find out the information that we need from declination? Well, if we flip to the day in question, August 21st, and we look down here is uh, 21 August. This is GMT. So we come down to 1600 GMT and then the declination column is right here. So come down to the day, 1600. Declination is 12 degrees and it's north. North, 12 degrees. Well, that's convenient. So the declination in this case is 12 degrees north. And if we observed the sun above the horizon at 85 degrees above the horizon, that would make the zenith distance in this case would be 90 minus 85 or five degrees. Now here's we, where we need to think about the situation. In this case, it looks like the sun is um, a little bit to our north in this case. So the sun's declination is higher than, uh, than our potential latitude. So in this case, latitude would equal declination minus zenith distance. The latitude equals declination minus zenith distance. And so if we do all that math out, uh, declination minus zenith distance, we end up with a latitude of seven degrees north. All right, so that's another kind of basic example. But finally, let's do one um, where it's a little more complicated. What if it is 21 August, 81, but it's 1630 GMT? So now we can't just look up the declination. And what if we observed the height of the sun at 55 degrees, 37.8 minutes above the horizon, All right? Well, the first thing we could do very easily is get our zenith distance by saying 90, minus that would be the zenith distance. One quick trick if you're doing this by hand is to say 90 is equal to 89 degrees and 60 minutes. It makes the hand math a little bit more straightforward. So in this case, the uh, zenith distance would be equal to 34 degrees and 22.2 .2 minutes. Okay, great. And now we need to look up the declination. So again, we go to uh, the correct day and we come down to 21 August. There's no 1630 here. There's 1600 and 1700. So if we have a declination at 1600 of 12 degrees north and a declination at 1700 of 11 degrees 59.2, our time in question is 1630. So we could interpolate this and take the value halfway between those. Alternatively, you can use the D number down here, 0 0.8 minutes, and use the increments and corrections pages in the back of the nautical almanac for 30 minutes, 0 0.8, and find a correction to use in that case. So the correction would be 0.4. So either way, our declination is going to be 11 degrees, 59, 0.6 minutes north 
and that's right out of the nautical almanac. So the last step is to think about the situation that we're in. And uh, I didn't give you a DR position, but in this case, um, we're kind of back where we started. We're in the Northern Hemisphere. The sun is also in the Northern Hemisphere, but lower than us. So latitude, uh, this value, should be equal to zenith distance, which is this value, plus declination. So latitude equals zenith distance plus declination. And if we add these two values together, um, zenith distance and declination, then we should get 46 degrees, 21 decimal eight minutes north. Right, so the process was to take the height observed, uh, turn it into a zenith distance, right? And then find the declination and then compute latitude based on the situation. And just as a recap uh, of the lesson in the beginning, we said that at one time during the day, the sun's declination or its latitude north or south of the equator passes our meridian or our line of longitude and everything kind of lines up nice and easily. So we could then define our latitude by the mathematical relationship between the declination of the sun and the zenith distance. Zenith distance, once again, was just the complement of what we measured with our sextant, right? So 90 degrees for a right angle minus the height observed yields the zenith distance. And then finally, we just need to think of what situation we're in based on our dead reckoning position and the declination of the sun, and then work through uh, examples such as this. Also remember that when we are using our height observed, those are corrected values. Um, in other videos, we talk about how to correct a sextant to get the height observed.